uh, when I started that subject, I just took one avenue altogether called the Comforter, where he's called the Spirit of God. As one of his names, one of his attributes is he is the Comforter. And I stepped out of that other series to, to deal with that just this morning, the Comforter. And he teaches us, he comes alongside us in our hour of grief, in our hour of sorrow, in our hour of troubles. When, when the Spirit of God manifests, he comes, he talks to us, he, he does things that no other human being can do. What, what people can't do in your hour of grief, the Spirit of God can. He's the only one because he knows us, he made us, and he can speak to us. I did two parts to it. One was, he's the Comforter and he comes to comfort you, and the other one he comes to help you cope with the situation until it breaks through so look at somebody say I believe I can cope so you need that teaching I don't have it tonight it'll be next week and maybe on YouTube during the week I don't know if Peter puts it up do you do it during the week he does it you'll probably find it on YouTube during the week but it's a really good teaching but I, when I got back home and I said okay well where do we go from that he said take it deeper Joe take it deeper so I want to talk to you tonight about the Holy Spirit of God I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit it's it's this place, it's in his presence. It's his person. It's his work that sets us apart from every other denomination, from every other, from every other, let's call it religion, from every other place of worship on the face of planet Earth. This one thing sets us apart. I'm not talking about the name over the door that says Pentecostal. Pentecost was something that happened centuries ago, at, 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 at the day of Pentecost. Let me tell you something. We're not interested in the title or the name that's over the door. We are interested in the experience. The experience where the Spirit of God comes upon you. And from that day, there's the operations of the Holy Spirit is operating through you, moving through you. Not to make... What? What's happening? Chest pain. Laura, to your feet. Down in there. All right. Don't, don't, don't worry about this. Let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, we will, we will absolutely refuse. Put that on pause. Don't, 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 don't keep this going. We absolutely refuse right now any operations of the enemy in this building. We will not allow that. We command what? The base of planet Earth is the Holy Spirit himself. Did you get that? The most important person on the face of planet Earth is the Holy Spirit. He's more important than the United Nations when they gather together. He's more important than when the Bank of England or the banks of the world get together. With all the psychologists that ever existed, they don't have an inch on the wisdom or the knowledge that the Holy Spirit has. He knows all. He knows all things. He has more wisdom that every professor in the upper echelon of society, that, ever, that all the professors in the world together that ever was and ever will be, the Spirit of God has more wisdom than, than them all put together. He has more knowledge than all the books that are in all the shelves in every library. And he's on the inside of you. He has all knowledge and he's inside you. See, if, if, if we could preach this, if I could get this revelation to you, that you would understand you're not just a Christian, you're not just a believer, but you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And as the temple of the Holy Ghost, he who has all wisdom, all knowledge, all understanding and all power resides now on the inside of you. That makes you different from the person down the road who drinks their gin and sucks on the Guinness and dances on a Friday night. That sets you apart entirely. It sets you apart from everybody because the creator of the ends of the earth is now res resident and residing on the inside of you. He is the one that was dispatched and sent from heaven itself. The Lord Jesus said, it's imperative that I go. And if I go, as soon as I get there, I'll say to my Father, and my Father will immediately, immediately dispatch the Holy Spirit. And He will come in my place. He will come in my place. And He will continue the work that I started on the face of planet Earth. And He will be different because Jesus was in the person. When He comes, He said, I won't come as a person. I will come inside the persons so that I can be all places at all times. He's with us. Look at somebody say, He's with us. He's with us. He said, He, he, he was sent by the Father. He was sent by the Father. Dispatched by God himself, dispatched right there to complete the work 
and the purpose of God on the face of planet earth. He was sent to complete it. He cannot complete it without people, without you. And you folks are a part of the plan of God to bring things to completion, to expand the kingdom of God and for to eliminate the kingdom of darkness. He was sent by the Father to do and to finish the work that Jesus Christ started at the cross of Calvary. See, the most important, the most important work, the most important job in the face of planet Earth is not the one in the government. It's not even the one in the White House or, or in Stormont. The most important job is not at found in the hospitals. The most important work on the face of planet Earth is the work of the Holy Spirit. This is why we got to learn how to put his work, his job first. His job first. You've got to understand that. Now in the Old Testament, the Old Testament primarily, the Old Testament was seen as the work of the Father. It was the Father was dealing with, with Israel. It was the work of the Father the whole way. And in the New Testament, it's slightly different because it's the work of the Son. The New Testament is the work of the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, but this present age, this present age, is the age of the Holy Spirit. Everybody shout the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Looks like you're looking for an update. Okay, she's, she's doing all right. She's absolutely doing all right. She's just taking her into a side room there. But uh, she's, uh, uh, I, saw her, uh, I saw her face changing. She's, she's okay. They're keeping an eye on her. Okay. So uh, uh, you can't understand. So the work of the Holy Spirit, the, the work of God, the work of the Father was the Old Testament. The work, the work in the New Testament is all about the Lord Jesus. But this end time work, this work that we're in right now is the dispensation. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. This is why you've got to learn to recognize this. As soon as you recognize who you're dealing with, who's dealing with you, where your power source comes from, everything will change. When you learn to wake up in the morning and your words is, good morning, Holy Spirit. You've got to learn to identify. A lot of churches don't talk about them. They're afraid to talk about the Holy Spirit. They think the Holy Spirit's away out there somewhere. We don't talk with them. We don't deal with them just in case we blaspheme them. And he's the one sent by your heavenly Father to work with you, to work alongside with you. He doesn't do the work. He says, I'll work with you, Joe. Wherever you go, then his power operates through you. He's working with us in this present age. Now, we need to know this. You need to know this, and then you need to, learn from him you need let him become your teacher when I read the books I read when I put the messages together I ask the Holy Spirit I say show me show me let, let me I'm going to read this book but show me stuff that I need to know he's your he is your teacher he's my teacher he's your lecturer he's he's we're going to get into a lot of that stuff later on but he's the one you need to learn how to learn from him and you need to learn how to cooperate with him Oh, when you begin to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, you'll begin to see life will begin to change with you. Your whole world, everything about you change. John chapter 16 and verse 5. John 16 and verse 5 says, But now I go my way uh, uh, to him that sent me. Uh, none of you have asked me whether, go, whether do you go. He said, But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart nevertheless. I tell you the truth, it is absolutely expedient for you that I go away. But if I go not away, the Comforter, he, he will not come unto you. But if I do depart, and he did depart, if I depart, then the Bible says, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because now I go to my Father. And you will see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world has now judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you're not able to bear it right now. How be it? When the Spirit of truth is another name of the Holy Spirit, he's the Spirit of truth. When he has come, he will guide you. He will guide you. He wants to be your teacher. He wants to be your guide. He, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself, but so whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak. And he shall show you things to come. Now, when I used to read that originally, how are we doing now? Okay, that's a good idea. Go for it. We keep praying. We keep, we keep going. You'll be fine, Batty. Now listen, we do, look this way. Keep, keep, keep focused here a minute. 
that uh, I used to think when I read that he'll show you things to come. I always thought he was talking about end time strategies, you know, the end time. But the more I read it, the more I believed it's nothing to do with end time strategies. I really believe that he's showing you things to come in your life so that the enemy, if he ambushes you or the enemy's ahead of you, then you, can, you'll, you'll know when to turn off, when to turn right, and you'll know what to do about this. Are, are we concentrating? Are we sure? Okay. I need the intercessors. I need the intercessors. I need you to get uh, uh, back into that room. Forget about the message. I'll give you the tape for you. I need the intercessors in the back. I need you to phone. Will you phone Garth? Uh, one of Brenda. Phone Garth. Uh, tell Garth what's going down. Get him to pray as well. Okay. Can we concentrate? I understand when stuff like this is going on. It's really, it's hard to understand. But we've got intercessors there praying. We've, uh, they're going to take her over to the hospital. She'll be fine. It's okay. She trusts us. Just, just trust the Lord in this one. And let's, let's try, and, try and focus and concentrate. <clears throat> and, and, and he will show you things to come about your personal life. I, I want to say, you know, you say, well, this, I never saw this coming. But he did. <clears throat> and I guarantee you. I guarantee you, he's been trying to tell you for weeks before it happened. I guarantee you, he's been trying to tell you, don't do this anymore. Walk over here. Now, do this. I guarantee you, he's been doing stuff just to, just to guide you so that, so that this would not come to, so that when it happens, that you would be ahead of the track. And he'll show you things to come. He shall glorify me. And he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that are the Father's are mine. Therefore I said, I'll take that that is mine and I'll show it unto you. A little while and you shall see me not. Uh, see me not again. And a little while you shall see me because I go unto the Father. Jesus Christ's way of introducing the Spirit of God was unique. You going over too, Laura? Okay, phone me, let me know what's going on. Jesus, I've never preached a message and run two different things at the same time. So, so I understand. Just got, let, let the intercessors do the work. Okay, just trust people to do their job. Let them do the work. We'll just get into this. And, and um, Jesus <clears throat> introduced the Holy Spirit in a unique way. He said, fellas, I don't want, I'm going. Now I can understand. They had been with him for, for years now and they'd seen them doing all the right. They didn't want him to go. And he had to plead with him. He said, let me tell you, fellas, I love to stay too, but we don't tell you, if, if I stay here, then the power of heaven cannot come. But if you let me go, and I'll say goodbye, and I've got, if you let me go, as soon as I get there, I'll, I'll send him, and it's just the same as me being here. It'll be the same. The miracles will happen, the signs and wonders, the good feeling on the inside. And Jesus Christ said, I'll go home and dispatch. When he dispatched the Holy Spirit from heaven and the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, when he arrived, it ushered in a new dispensation. It could not have happened in the Old Testament because the blood of Jesus Christ had not been given, not been shed. Up until that place, the Holy Spirit didn't live inside people. He worked outside of people. Sometimes he would come upon people and instruct people, but he was never inside people because the blood of Jesus Christ had not been given. Once the blood of Jesus Christ had paid the price for cleansing, for totality, you became a temple of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost had somewhere to reside. So when you get blood washed, born again, and by the kingdom of God and, this, and, and filled, let me tell you, then you're open for the Spirit of God to come on the inside of you and dwell on the inside of you. Joel and Joel chapter 2 was talking about this from the beginning. He talked about the last days. You'll find in the scriptures in the Old Testament it uses a, a terminology that many people mix up and it's called the day of the Lord. Have you ever heard of the day of the Lord used? Well, the day of the Lord is just the 33 and a half years uh, when, the, when the Lord himself walked across the face of planet earth it was the day of the lord it was the, the length of time that the lord jesus was on the earth and that's all it describes but this one he's describing was a supernatural act a breaking through of the spirit of god of heaven itself in the in the, uh, in the affairs of human beings when the spirit of god would manifest himself in the lives of human beings and and the bible was beginning to say from that day forward things would change the old was over, the new had begun, and the power to make it resident is there. The book of Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 7 says this, For if that first covenant had been, this is the Old Testament, if, with all this blood of uh, bulls and goats, it said, it said, if the first covenant had been faultless, then there should be no place should have been sought for a second covenant. 
but finding fault with it, he said, Behold, the day will come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in that day, when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in that covenant, but I, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make now with the house of Israel in these days, saith the Lord. Listen to this. I will put my laws into their mind. I'll write it under their heart. And I will be to them a God. And they will be to me a people. And they shall not need to teach every man his neighbor and every brother saying, Know the Lord, for, for all shall know him from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. He said, I will remember no more. God made a covenant with Israel. It was carved into stone. The laws were carved into stone. God called Moses up onto the, onto the mountain, away separated from the people. Uh, he, he did the laser finger and burnt the, burnt the commandments into the stone and gave the two big tablets of stone to Moses. And Moses had been up there 40 days and Moses got a tablet under each arm and was going back down to tell the children of Israel of the great covenant God had made and the laws that went with it. And as he got down towards the camp of the children of Israel, he heard partying and dancing and when he looked down he saw the people were half naked they were jumping about and squealing and doing all types of stuff and he saw right in the middle of it a golden calf they had created an idol they had turned from God and created an idol and Moses got so angry with it he took the tablets and he threw them down when he threw them down the two tablets were broken the commandments were broken so he had to go back up the mountain again You've read it. He went back up the mountain again. He said, Father, the tablets are kind of broken now. He said, okay. I said, well, we'll do it again. We'll rewrite them. But you write them, Moses. God never wrote them on tablets twice. He said, Moses, you write them, son. And Moses took note. And Moses wrote them and brought them down before the people. And Moses, God said, tell them, Moses. Tell them, says, I want to be their God. I'm going to put laws in their heart and in their mind so that if they fulfill the laws, I will bless them exceedingly. So the first law was written in stone. But the people were faithless. They didn't continue. They broke the law continuously until God one day said, enough is enough is enough. And he drew another covenant, signed and sealed in the blood of the Lord Jesus. And this one is different. He says, back there, the law was written in stone. And he said, this one's entirely different. He said, this one comes with me. I want to do this personally. I want to live on the inside of them. I want, I want to be in there who is the law. I want to be in there. I will put my law in their mind. I'll write it in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they will be my people. I want to be right in there. I want to challenge them. I want to convict them. I just call them your personal trainer. I want to be right in there as the personal trailer. Jesus Christ, the person, couldn't be inside people because he's a person. But the person of the Holy Spirit can, and he comes right on the inside of a people. He said, I want to be right in there. I want to be your personal guide. I want to be your personal trainer. I want to take responsibility for you. I want to be your healer, your savior, your deliverer. I want to watch over you. I want to provide for you. I want to protect for you. I, I want to be right there. You, this could never happen in the Old Testament. But in other words, let me give you the Joe Corey translation. I want to be with you right there in your bedroom. I want to teach you on your bedroom. I want to teach you when you're driving your car. I want to be right there coming out of your stereo with CDs. I, I want to teach you. I want to be right there. That could not have ever happened. I want to be right there in your kitchen when you're peeling your potatoes. I want to be right there talking to you. I want to be your personal guide, your personal trainer in every aspect of life. I want to walk with you. I want to teach you then how to walk with me. He said it in verse 11. He said that, that, that you, you'll not have to teach your neighbor. Uh, 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 you'll not have to teach, teach your neighbor anything. And said, well, do you know the Lord? For they'll know me. He said, you won't have to say, well, do you understand, brother, that's wrong? He said, because I will be on the inside of them challenging them and telling them that's not right you're not supposed to do that keep walking this way not just correcting your steps but ordering your paths ordering your paths he said i want to be there that's the work of the holy spirit from the least the youngest member you know what thrills my heart you get the lack of of, of of the wee lot at the back there and you get the lot of them they come up in the prayer line. have you ever seen them on sunday nights 
They don't do it on so, so much on Sunday morning, but you come. Alex, he, he, he's no age. He's looking at me now. He's looking at me. How old are you now? About eight? Eight. Smile at me. Eight years old. And you do prayer lines. And sometimes I, I look around and here, here he comes, standing on a prayer line. And sometimes I'll say, did your ma send you? <laughs> now he's like, no, no, no. Well, we didn't send it. No, he says, because he's, cause the Spirit of God's in him too. Spirit of God comes in from the least to the oldest. He said, he'd be in, he wants to be there. He wants to lead you. He's, let me tell you, let me, let me get into this. The work of the Holy Spirit, especially in the Old Testament. The work of the, Holy, of the Old Testament in the introduction of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God has always been there foretelling that Christ will come. Always telling them through the, inspiring the prophets of old to tell them, here's exactly how it's going to come. This is what's going to, giving them prophecy after prophecy, uh, letting them know in advance that the Messiah is coming. The Holy Spirit did that. The Holy Spirit then was the one who brought conception and uh, 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 Jesus to be come through the womb of Mary. It said in Luke 1 and verse 38, the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you and the, the, therefore that holy thing which is born in you shall be called the Son of God. That was the work of the Holy Spirit even on the conception. Then, then when Jesus stepped down into the Jordan, it was the Holy Ghost. Remember the Bible said, John said, I saw him, saw the Spirit of God descending on him and, and sealing, sealing it in baptism. There was the Holy Spirit. Within a few chapters, you find the Holy Spirit. He said that Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit out into the wilderness to be tested and tried. You'll find that when you get to Luke chapter 4, but the next chapter talks about that the Holy Spirit was actually the ministry of the Lord Jesus. Because Jesus himself said this in Luke 4 verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me too. And then he tells him what he, the power of God come on him for. But Jesus give, give glory, give, give the honor back to the Holy Spirit. He says the Holy Spirit that's doing this. It's the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead. It says in Romans 8 and verse 11, but if the Spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you. That's the same Holy Spirit. Can you imagine the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is now resident inside you? That makes you different. Look at somebody say, I'm different. You're right, you're different. Entirely different because you've got the power of God now resident inside you. You've got God who said, I want to be there. I want to train you. I want to teach you. I want to show you things. I want to be everything that you need in this lifetime. In fact, some of the last words of the Lord Jesus Christ was this, he said, go to the upper room and wait on the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father was the promise that the Holy Spirit would come. And he foretold of it. And the Lord Jesus said, I'm, I'm going, fellas, I'll send him. Now you've got to go back to Jerusalem, told them exactly where to wait, and the Holy Ghost would begin to come. And when the Holy Ghost comes, let me tell you, when you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes. It is the Spirit of God that convicts you. You never got born again except where you were convicted by the Spirit of God, to come to your heavenly Father. That struggle that went on on the inside of you was initiated by God himself. You didn't come because you wanted to. You came because God triggered stuff off. The Holy Spirit got in there and began to convict you and challenge you about the way you live, about your eternity, etc. And, and the struggle that went on, we call it conviction. But really it's you wrestling with God and saying, I don't want to get saved, I don't want to go to church, I don't want to. But if you didn't wrestle so long, and give in to the conviction real quick. You'd have been born again quicker. But it's the Spirit of God coming after you, saying, this is your time. This is your moment. I, and this is when you felt the pressure of it to you give in. And it was the Holy Spirit that chased after you. He convicted you. It was the same Holy Spirit who brought you into the new birth. And the minute you said, I surrender all, it was the Holy Spirit that now dropped on in the inside of you and you became the temple of the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody say, you don't know who you're sitting beside. You became the temple. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19 says, What do you not know? That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. He's in you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He went on to say, which is of God. He said, and you're not your own now. It means you can't do what you want to do. You can't even do what you used to do. That God's on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit's in there. He wants to guide your life. He wants to. Do. He don't want you messing the thing up. He said, trust me, I'll get you to where you need to go. It is the Holy Spirit that seals you. 
In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, he says that we are sealed. When you get born again, the, Sp- the Holy Spirit comes on the inside of you. He's now resident on the inside of you and he seals you. That word seals, it's got two, uh, two different uh, uh, connotations of it. And one is it locks. It just simply locks. So, so you're locked into salvation because of the Holy Spirit done. The second one, it actually means to, to make a deposit. Like when the young lady was here this morning and we made reference to her and her fiancé because they just got engaged last week and had the knuckle duster there to prove you the blue stone, wonderful blue stone. Anyway, when she sat there, that engagement ring, that engagement ring is what everybody knows, it's a promise to marry the guy. And it's a promise from this guy, I'm going to go through with this. I won't leave your hands I won't drive When that ring went on, it's a sign, seal, and deliver. You may as well be married now because you got the first ring on. It's a deposit that the rest is coming. I won't let you down. And the Holy Spirit coming, at, when you get born again, the Holy Spirit is the deposit. It's the, it's the guarantee that you have the rest of place in heaven. You're now the bride of Christ waiting to meet up with the master, waiting to meet, meet up with, with, the, with the bridegroom. It is the Spirit of God according to 1 Timothy chapter, 20, chapter 2, chapter 21. If you can find 21, you got the wrong Bible. But the Bible says he adopts us. We were adopted into the kingdom of God, adopted into the family of God. We are adopted into the family of God. And I remember one time looking into that in some depth to find out exactly what that meant. And what I read about it was in those days in particular, I don't know how the laws of adoption stands right now, but I know this, in the days when this was written, in the days of the Lord Jesus, a person who was adopted had more rights than the blood-bought person. If you were in the bloodline, you didn't have it. You could be written out of the will. They could turn around and say, "Well, you're a bad boy. We're going to take you off the off the will. We're, you, we're going to dis, you're going to disinherit everything." But when you were adopted, you could not lose anything. The law said that you were worth more and had to hold till it more than the actual blood stock. Isn't that amazing? And he said, "It's the Holy Spirit that adopted us into the family of God. It's the Holy Spirit that fills us." We're going to talk about that at the end of this. But it's the Holy Spirit then who became the author of the Scriptures. He's the one that, do you ever think, well, well, who put all this together? Who designed this as that? And who, who wrote all this? You know, all them, different, all them different authors and different writers. The canon of Scripture, who puts it together? Oh, it, it didn't come together in three weeks. It wasn't somebody that got it all down on a database and wrote it down. It took years to put this thing, centuries to put it all together. But the Bible tells us clearly it was the Holy Spirit who's the author of the Scriptures. He's the one decided what would be written and how to do it. And the Bible said that he inspired men to write. He's the one that put the scriptures together. In fact, you go further, uh, according to Second Corinthians in chapter 2, it tells you this, that he's the one that interprets scripture. So I know you can go to Bible school and you can do and you can learn it. You can buy a Bible and read it back in front and you can, I've been reading this Bible for years. But every now and then you read it and you see something you've never saw before. Or you read this passage of Scripture and you think, my goodness me, that's over here. And you can link it this way. Do anybody know what I'm talking about? We call it revelation. You read something and it's revealed to you. It's like a mystery that's revealed. You say, that's what that means? Wow, that's how that goes together. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit interprets it to you. The Bible also tells you that your Holy Spirit is your guide. He has promised to be this. He will not lie to you. He will not let you know. He said, I will be your guide. I'll help you through the complexity of his life. It's the Holy Spirit that anoints. That word anoint is a Christianese word and it simply means to empower you. Empower you to do what God has called you to do. It is the Holy Spirit that empowers you. It is the Holy Spirit that sanctifies you. That's another big Christianese word that simply means sets you apart for the purpose God needs you for. And so you've been anointed by the Holy Spirit. You're set apart by the Holy Spirit. The fruit of your life is produced from the Holy Spirit. So all that kindness and joy and peace, that's the Holy Spirit looking out through you. And then he empowers you. He's the one that empowers your life. So your witness is, is not, is not a, a weak witness anymore. It's not that you've been through this and you learn how to tell it. It's the power of God that comes upon you to enable you to say it the way it's supposed to say 
so that you, you can deliver it. And you think, man, I don't even know how I say that. But whenever they heard it, they heard it different than you said it. And it's the power of God works on it. And that power of God brings other people into the kingdom of God. Uh, let me just uh, share this in, in uh, winding this down. But there is two experiences that you really have to know about uh, uh, when we're dealing with the Holy Spirit. And one is this, you've got to know this. You receive the Holy Spirit the moment you get born again. Now, please remember that because people will fight you on these issues. They say, well, why do I need the baptism of the Holy Ghost when the Holy Ghost is on my... That's right, the Holy Ghost is in you. That You could not get born again without the Holy Ghost convicting you and without the Holy Ghost then taking up residence. So the, the minute... It doesn't matter to me where it happened. It matter to me in a car. It can happen to you in the house. It can happen to you in the church service or prayer line or whatever. But wherever you turn around and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord, forgive me. Come into my heart. You were born again that moment. The Spirit of God entered in that second. There's a whole bunch of stuff happened in that second that you wouldn't even be aware of. But a lot of stuff happened. You were cleansed. You were washed in the blood of the Lamb. You're, all your sins were forgiven. You were whiter than the driven snow. Nothing could be ever brought up you again. You were adopted immediately into the family of God. You were taken out of the clutches of the enemy who had you doing all types of stuff. He controlled your life. The day you give your heart and soul to the Lord Jesus, he lifted you out of the kingdom of darkness and put you up into the kingdom of his dear son. You're no longer a part of the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of darkness has no hold over you anymore now you're of the kingdom of God you're a child of the living God and that happened in a second of time when you surrendered all and the spirit of the Lord came in you you became the temple of the Holy Ghost now that could not happen in the Old Testament because the blood of Jesus had not been given once the blood was given, then that blood cleansed us and enabled the Spirit of God to come on the other side. There's one mother step, and, and, and this is where we call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and we'll talk about this for just a little moment too. But the word bapti, baptism, the word baptize, it simply means, and the Greek it's baptismal, and it simply means to submerge, to soak, or to overwhelm, to fill the maximum capacity. And the Spirit of God came in you on the inside of you when you, got, when you got born again to help you through. But there's another area to it. There's another area to it where you give the Spirit of God the, the access to every area of your life. And you invite Him to come and soak you, to overwhelm you, to overpower you. If the finger to fingernail to fingernail, from the crown of your head to the soles of feet, just He has all parts of your life. And at a moment in time, He can overcome you, overwhelm you. He begins to do it. The Bible said at the end of that, there's the, Bible, there's the evidence of speaking in tongues. But the Bible, Lord Jesus, it was put this way. He says, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now that's different than the Holy Ghost coming on the inside of you to get you saved. This is a different area of it. He's now talking about, now you're born again. Now he's talking that you're cleansing. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. He says, you allow the Holy Ghost to overwhelm you. He said, what happens right behind it is the power of God begins to operate. Every born again believer needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm not asking you to become Pentecostal. The name over the church is irrelevant. It is the experience and it's what happens afterwards. He gives you, when the Spirit of God, uh, you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you what happened. He gives you the power to overcome those things that overcome you for years. The areas of weakness in your life, the areas where you can't handle, the areas you keep slipping back into the old ways. And it overcomes you. Once you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the power of God comes more resident in your life and it gives you the ability then to, to withstand, push back and become the child of God that you need to be. All of a sudden, your testimony has power. You probably operate in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Everything about your life changes dramatically. You'll read the Bible, it all opens up to you. Things happen. There's a passage of Scripture that carries the two things here. In Acts chapter 11 and verse 12, it says... 
the Spirit, this the Holy Spirit made me go with him. He's talking about Peter, who was called down to uh, Cornelius' house. And he said, made me, the Spirit of God uh, told me to go down and don't doubt anything. Moreover, then six men accompanied me, and we entered into that man Cornelius' house. Verse 13 said, And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, with, which stood and said unto, said unto him, He said, Send to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. And the Bible says, And who, who shall tell you the words whereby you and all your house shall be saved? So the Spirit of God said, And he go down there, tell them about salvation. Preach, the, every, preach salvation, born again message. And he says, he said, and I did that. Preached that born again message. And he says, and as I began to speak, he said, the Holy Ghost fell upon them as on us at the beginning. And then I remembered the words of the Lord that said, John indeed baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized, soaked, submerged with the Holy Ghost. He went in to preach salvation. Evidently, they got born again. They got born again. When they got born again, now a second experience came onto their life. As he was talking to them, they got baptized in the Holy Ghost, filled to overflowing. And he said, just the same way as it happened to us. He's now talking about what happened to them in Pentecost. When the born again ones went up into the room and they waited on the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God came and they were baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He said, that's what happened to these guys. We're not talking about them getting saved. They got saved there. But they got saved and they got filled with the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost fills a person, you're different than an unfilled person. Because the power of God is resident. Your life has more meaning you'll find that the Spirit of God will be direct in your life. He'll challenge you. Believe you me, he'll challenge you. He won't let you away with stuff you used to get away with. He'll correct you. He'll challenge you. But he'll push you and say, here's the way. Believe this. You get dreams and visions and talk and it shows you things and your revelation of, of who you are and what's going to becomes more profound in your life as you does it because the power of God comes upon your life with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I've always said every believer should have that. No matter to me where you hang your heart on Sunday. But you need the Holy Ghost on the inside of you to do it. Then, i, I got to close in this, but there is what we call the manifestations of the Spirit of God. There's, there's, there's only one Spirit, but there's many working out of that. There's many manifestations of that. And that's what makes it a variety and makes it so wonderful. I meet all types of people in all walks of life who tell me they're filled with the Holy Ghost and, and they do exploits. And some of them exploits, I said, man, how do you do that? And I know rightly it's not even worth asking because it's not on my plate. That's their job, not mine. But people look and say, well, how do you do all that stuff? How do you do it? Because it's a manifestation of the power. It's an avenue that the Holy Ghost operates through you. And every, the Spirit of God wants to do that with every single person. It's like electricity. There's, there's one big power uh, house back there. Maybe it's Kilroot. Maybe not Kilroot anymore. I don't know where our power source, source comes from. The main power source that used to come down from Kilroot, when it comes out, that's not the same power that goes into your house. If that power line, the grid that came down from the main grid, just was pumped into your house, it would blow your house up the minute you switched your kettle on because it's thousands and thousands of volts. You got 240 volts. But you drop onto the main grid, your cattle's going to take off through the roof like a rocket. What they have to do is they have the main grid come down and then there's branches come off it and they step it down. They step it down in the power stations so it's working order. And then they bring it over to the office and they step it down again till they get in a working order and then they can feed it out to your house. It's the same power. It's the same power, but it's got different manifestations. Are you with me? So we're not all going to operate the same. We're not all going to do the same. But believe you me, when the power of God is operational, it's nothing like human operations. You'll say things that you didn't know you know. You'll, you'll be able to talk to people before you know it, they're crying. You'll be able to say to somebody, do you know Jesus? And if anybody else asks them to turn around and say, who do you think you're talking to? But when you say it, because the power of God is, they'll say, no, actually, could you help me? Life changes. You, 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 because the Spirit of God is in there, drawing it out of you. We haven't time to go into this next because I want to end that right now as an introduction and we'll pick up from this. But the part comes after that is called the gifts. 
And the gifts of the Holy Spirit are really, I just call them simply the tools. I don't believe I'm irrelevant or reverent by using that terminology. I think the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and they're wonderful, and, and they are precise, and they're what we need for to win into the kingdom of God. You, you cannot do it. You cannot do it effectively. There's people who's not filled with the Holy Ghost, and they can do things. But the people who stay with the power of God, filled, baptized in the Holy Ghost, they have a different way. Because the unction of the Holy Spirit's on them and enables them. And he has the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Operate, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to the New Testament, operates in every church. Now, if the leader doesn't allow it to operate in the church, then it'll never, because the Spirit of God won't burst forth and, uh, uh, you know, and, and do something out of order. He's a God of order. But wherever he's allowed and invited, you'll find the gifts of the Holy Ghost operating. There's the healings and things that we so desperately need. There's, there's the, the, the miracles we need. They're just gifts. They're the tools that God gives us. He, he doesn't give you the whole nine gifts. You don't, you don't, I guarantee you, you're not operational in all nine gifts. And you can find out which ones you are operational in and start to use it for you know your, your life is more powerful than ever before. So I know what I can do, and, and, and uh, there's other areas that people see me prophesying all the time. That's not the, only, not, that's not the only gift I operate in, by the way, but uh, it's the one you see the most. Uh, uh, but you have those gifts on the inside. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have the gifts. The gifts are not there to make you a somebody and a something special. And the problem is, is because it's a rarity for somebody to operate in the gifts so powerfully, then they put you on a pedestal and think you're somebody else. And it's not you, it's the Holy Ghost. So we've got to learn how to get away from that. You don't need your photograph taken. You don't need to be writing your autograph. You're just doing the work of God. And it's a tool that God gives you to get the job done. For to bring people into the kingdom, for to rescue people, for to, for to see where them demons are and cast them out of people. That, that's all it is. It's, it's a tool, the tools, the tools of the Holy Ghost. Oh, but it's fun. <laughs> it's fun and it's wonderful when you can watch people change in a second of time because a gift is an operation. A person could get healed on the spot because of a gift. That's an operation. That, that, that you're sitting talking to somebody and somebody with a discernment of spirit can just look and say, wait a minute, here's what the problem is here. With word of knowledge and, 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 and word of wisdom, they can tell you exactly what's going on. And then you, when God, they, most of them, I mean, I don't want to start to get into the teaching of the gifts, but they usually work in pairs. And if you've got the gift of, of knowledge, uh, then you'll find the work in the wisdom, the gift of wisdom comes right alongside it. Because one, you'll know, you'll know, usually the word of knowledge is to let you know that he knows where you are. And then the word of wisdom tells you then what you need to do about it. So it's exciting. We need to look into that in a little bit of detail. But what you need first is the Holy Ghost. If you have the power, if you're born again, the Holy Ghost is there now. But you need baptized in the Holy Ghost to allow the power of God to flow through you. Are you with me tonight? It's that power that allows him to operate through you then it becomes about him and not of you. And so if you begin to do that and allow the Spirit of God, your, your, the prayer meeting will become entirely different because the Spirit of God gets to operate. Your world, your church, your, your, your car, your, 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 wherever you are, it's a whole different experience now because of the power of the Spirit of God. He wants, he wants you. He wants you born again so that you become the temple of the Holy Ghost. But he wants the power of God to operate inside you. I, I, I never forget when I, when I first got born again, I was going to a, a Holy Ghost church and I remember there was, a, 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 they, they spoke in tongues a lot, not in the main service, but in the prayer meetings, I was spoken in tongues. I'd never heard anybody talking in tongues in my life. Never. And I remember being at the prayer meeting and there was two guys behind me and they, they stammered. And the natural when they talked, they could hardly say two words together without stammering. If they went to say hello, you were trying to help them. And, and they couldn't get two words out. Uh, uh, and the two, they were twins. And, but they, they struggled in their conversations because of the stammering. And I remember, I remember, they were, I was my head down ready to pray, and all of them was like, la 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 I turned around and thought, what is that? <laughs> and I turned around like this here, and I'm, stand, and I'm watching these twins that stammered and couldn't talk fluently speaking. You know what I did? I took my chair and I turned it right around this way and I sat down here in the resident just watching these boys talking in tongues. That's it. I don't understand that. But I want it. But I want it. 
but I want it. Oh, I remember, I remember the night I, Laura and I, we got filled with the Holy Ghost on the same night. And I remember I, gets, I just couldn't stop talking in tongues, talking in tongues all night, talking in tongues. But you know what I find with, with talking in tongues? The Bible says you can build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. It builds you up. It gets you ready. And then when you go to do something, the power's resident to help you through. We don't want to get into all that tonight. That's for a different session, a different time. I just want you to know who lives on the inside of you. If you know who's on the inside of you, you won't struggle. You won't allow the devil to intimidate you or your family. When you understand the power of God, the person of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity lives inside you. Lives inside you. He's trying to talk to you. He's trying to explain to you. He'll use visions and dreams. He'll wait till you're sleeping and give you a dream. He'll try to talk to you, go over to him, get him an interpreter. He's always trying to show you things to come about your life. He's trying to protect you. Trying to tell you to lose weight, give up the fish and chips. Ha! He's, try, he's trying to tell you, he plays, he's, he's prompting you. He's prompted. He's working on the ends. I go back to school. Need you to read this book. Many a time when I finish reading, I, I, look, I got a, a library of books. You know, I got stuff, new stuff, and old stuff from there. And sometimes when I finish, I just look along and say, "What am I supposed to read now? What, what do you want to read?" And for sure, you're you're looking along the top line, and your eyes will light on this, and you think, "Man, I need to read that one." And you pull it down, and so you you're only into the first chapter, and there it is. Say, man, why didn't I read this six weeks? Well, six weeks ago, you didn't need it. The Spirit of God wants you to read that now. So you got to learn how to read books. you got to learn how to read your Bible. Well, well what Bible? Go- you know, I don't do this. I'll flick through here. Well, there's, well, let's start there the day. Wherever my Bible opens, Lord, I'll read. Quit it. Quit it. <laughs> no, I just burst your bubble straight away. Start in a book, and you read it until you've read the book. When you read it, say, where will I go next? Then read the next book. And if you're just young and faithful, stay in the New Testament. You stay in the New Testament. I've always said starting the Gospel of Mark, it's so easy, it's full of miracles, and it gets you then to believe that God is a God of, uh, uh, that can do anything. Start in the Gospel of Mark, read it right through. When you do it, then skip over to, to the... Don't, take, don't go into the book of Deuteronomy and the book of Leviticus. You'll probably not read the Bible anymore if you did. You'll be so put off. So start in something simple. And I've always said, and if you've got a Bible that you need a magnifying glass to see the writing... Give it away to charity. Bless the Bible to somebody. And get yourself one with big writing. It's not because you're half blind. But you'll find that the bigger the print, you can read more. And you won't get sleepy. Did you ever get sleepy reading the Bible? Oh, yes, you did. I don't lie to daddy. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. You're t- two, two, two verses and suddenly your eyes are gone. It's simply because the print is so small that you're, you're struggling. Get a bigger print Bible. Don't let anybody see you bad, but just get it out there, put it in the bag and get it home. When you open it up, I tell you something, you, you, you'll have read three or four chapters and won't even, you won't even remember you read it. You'll just, there, it's just so smooth. Bigger print Bibles, read them. Different translations. Different translations. I, 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 I just, when I got born again, I was handed the King James's Bible, so I started to read. I really enjoy the King James's Bible. But when I study, I study the Amplifier. I go over to the Living Bible. I bought my mom and dad because they were aged and they were struggling and they're understanding. And I went one day and bought them a new Living Translation. The two of them loved it. It made it more in a story for it. It's still the Word of God. And God could still speak to them out of it. Find something. Find a way to get the Word of God on the inside. Feed the Holy Spirit on His Word and He'll begin to bring it alive to you and watch the power of God operate in your life. Let me tell yourself, you'll become like a magnet. And instead of you having to run and ask people, people will be coming and asking you. They'll find you because the Holy Spirit on the inside will draw people to you. That is the work and the operation of the Holy Spirit who is now resident on the inside of you. That's who's operating. It's him that's opened the doors, not you. It's not your good looks, charms, and and personality that's getting you where you are. It's the Holy Spirit. And so if that door closed, let me tell you, don't even try to open it. Don't try to open it. God knows best. See, show me. Show me what I need to do. Let him guide your life. Life is short. But even if you get... 80, 90, or get 100. 
Maybe we'll go good and we'll get 120 each. I don't know. But, but if you get, I guarantee you, when you get to the 119th year, you look back and say, where did the time go? <laughs> it it kind of just, and it's over. Like you, you get that island, you, 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 get, you get leave the college, and sort of here you are now, you're in the university, and then all of a sudden you're, in, you're into the job. But, and you get, to the end, uh, you get to the end of the course, and you suddenly look back and say, it doesn't seem like yesterday since I was just going into Queens or Strand or wherever you are. All them years, but they're just, they're gone. You don't have forever on this earth. You have a limited time to be here. We don't hold the code to that, nor the key to that. God and God alone holds the secret of when your time is up. It's called your sell-by date. Look at somebody say, your sell-by date. Your, your, your sell-by date will one day be over, and God and God alone knows when that is. So he gives you a certain time on the face of planet Earth to do an assignment and a mission that you're here on. You can do it without the Holy Spirit. So the sooner you get the Holy Spirit, the quicker you get the job done. And when you get the job done, you don't have time to do everybody else's job, only your own. So mind your own business. Look at somebody say, mind your own business. <laughs> now me, I have to mind everybody's business. I've got to be dealing with you and dealing with you. But that's, that's my business. That's who I am. But mostly you don't have time to run after everybody else. You have only enough time given to you to do what you're called to do. And you need the Holy Ghost to get the job done. Could I leave that teaching there? We'll pick that up another time. I think we need to explore that. I, I couldn't go any further until we got the basics of it on the inside. But I think it just changes you. Once you know who he is on the inside of you, that changes you entirely. God wants to do things in this building tonight. First of all, if you do not know him as Jesus Christ as Lord, if you don't know Jesus as Lord, then you really have no way into the Father. You can only come to the Father through his Son, Jesus. But uh, once you've accepted Jesus Christ and made him Lord of your life, then you're open to the whole kingdom of God. The kingdom of God now resides on the inside of you and the Spirit of God is in there. But if, you're, if you have not asked Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then this would be the moment to do it. Ask him. And even if you've asked him, you say, well, I'm not sure if I am or not. Well, make sure, just say, Father, I just didn't make sure last night. Just, just come in, forgive me of every sin. Cleanse me right now. Let your blood, let your blood that bought me cleanse me entirely and completely. And come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me now for time and eternity. <coughs> and it's done. Jesus done the hard bit that you could do the easy bit. And then live for him. So, Joe, I am living for him, but I'm really struggling. I know, but that's why the power of God comes to assist you, to assist you, to help you break the, break the addictions of your life, to have, takes the power out of, out of the operation of the enemy. In your areas where your weakness, God, God can break that weakness and put you in a whole strength in a new direction by the power of God. We want to deal with that right now in this meeting tonight. We'll lay hands on people that need hands laid on. We're going to believe for the Holy Ghost to come upon you the power of God to be resident on the inside of you so that you can do what God has called you to do. It's necessary, absolutely necessary. We're not coerced, we're not persuaded, we'll just do it. And if it's already done, you say, well, Joe, you're preaching till the till Holy Ghost out. Hey, fantastic, we'll go home and drink coffee and think it over and eat toast and cheese. But just in case, you say, man, I need that power of God resident in my life. I really need it. Bible talks about after people got filled with the Holy Ghost, and later on in the book of Acts, he said they got refilled. You can get infilled. Filled a hundred times. Before I left my office tonight, I said, God, how can I preach this without being filled afresh? I'm giving out all the time, all the time. We, we were down, down in the last night, preaching away, and my heart's going down, prophesying right, left, and center. But let me tell you something. I said this just tonight again. I humbled myself for another. I said, fill me again. Fill me again. Fill me again. I can't do what I do without the Holy Spirit. And you need to come to that realization. Of course it's the Father. He's the theme. He, he, he's the central theme, the Father. It's all because of Jesus, His Son, that said, I'll go and He gave His life and give His blood that we have an entrance. But they both, Jesus and the Father said, I'm sending the Holy Ghost directly. And he's going to guide you through your earthly ventures 
till that time's over. You need to recognize the Holy Spirit every morning in your life. To start, it gets funny to start because you always start off and say, Heavenly Father, try it in the morning and say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. I'm awake. <laughs> what will we do today? Invite him into your life directly. This meeting, right now, right now, right now. We're going to have a Holy Ghost line for those that needs filled with the Holy Ghost. Refilled in, filled with the Holy Ghost. 